Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Daily Six, our six-minute video every weekday, where this week we've been getting into the Word of God. We've learned about how to study the Scriptures, to use it academically, to dig a little deeper into what the text means. We've looked at how to use the Bible devotionally, like a meditative tool that we can connect with God in relationship. We spent some time talking about memorizing the Bible, hiding the Word of God in our heart that would help us discern between the Spirit and between our flesh. We've looked at it as a sword, a weapon in our spiritual battles, all the conflicts and stresses you and I face on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I hope you'll come with us today. Grab a physical Bible. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to take one more look this week at how we can use the Bible as a powerful platform as we pray and seek God. Come on with us. One of the most important aspects of our faith is how we communicate with God. We talk to him and he responds back to us. We listen to him, we make requests of him, and he meets with us. That's what the Bible calls prayer. The Bible also promises that when two or three people gather together in his name, when, when we get together as a church and we begin to pray and ask him for things, the Bible says, promises that he will hear us and he will give us what it is that we're asking for him. Now, of course, it has to be in accordance with his will. And that's where using the Bible as a tool for prayer comes in. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, the Apostle Paul tells us that we have been seated with Christ. We've been, God has raised us up with Christ and has seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We'll put a link in the description below of some teaching we've done on this in the past, how we understand that to be seated with Christ, we're seated next to Jesus, who is at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. We've learned in previous weeks that being at the right hand of God is a position of authority. It is a position of power that we've been given. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul tells us that we have weapons of spiritual warfare, and they are in fact mighty through God. They, in verse 5 of uh, 2 Corinthians 10, he says, we demolish arguments, we pull down things, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God through Christ. And we do that with the Bible. The Word of God is our absolute sure way that when we're praying, we know we are praying in accordance with the will of God. On Sunday mornings, we have these prayer cards that we set out, and we ask folks to fill out prayer needs and to present their requests to us. And as a congregation, we pray over them. People come down and pray over this during service. We have a prayer team before, that meets before church, and we pray over these needs. I want to model for you here for just about a minute or so how to take one of these prayer needs that you have in your life uh, and present them to God on the platform of Scripture so that you can stand strong in that. Let's take this one prayer card. A, a dear friend of mine, a sister here in our church, she's written about a battle she has with depression. She says, my depression has been really bad lately. So, of course, we want to pray about that. <laughs> now, you've seen how people do this, haven't you? Oftentimes, you get into a small group or some kind of prayer setting, and people spend a lot of energy reading to God the prayer need. So-and-so feels this way, God. We know that's not cool, right? Whatever. And then oftentimes, believers... They sort of pray with a bit of, almost a, a bit of skepticism that God's going to break through. There's not, there's not this passionate authority in what we're praying. Well, friends, when we pray the scripture, when we take a verse of the Bible and we pray it back to God with boldness, here's how it works. Philippians chapter 4 has a promise about not being anxious about anything, but presenting our anxiousness to God, our needs to God, in prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. And he promises the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds. So I want to pray that scripture over this sister of ours. Pray with me, would you? God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in accordance with your word that tells us to present our anxiety to you, God, we give you thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you're going to heal this sister's depression. And that you, God, you're going to bring the peace of God that transcends all of our understanding. God, I pray you guard her heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And God, we're going to believe that and we're going to pray for that and give you thanks for it. Did you see what I just did? I took a passage of scripture and I prayed that truth back to God. Why? 
because I am absolutely confident it's the will of God because it's in the word of God. So I can turn and present that to him in faith rather than praying from a defeated position of, God, I hope you're going to help my sister. I'm actually going to believe you because your word says you're going to do it. Now, I hope you're going to give God more than six minutes today. And as you do, in the description down below, you'll see uh, some other passages you can use. You can uh, other things you could pray for other people, some questions you could ask. And I want to challenge you today. Take some prayer needs out of your life or your friend's life or your family's life or someone you know and pray the word of God over them with boldness and with authority. We're so glad you've been hanging with us in the Daily Six this week. We're going to have one more week of it during this teaching series next week. You'll find our website, Mount Hope Loudon, mthopeloudon.org, in the description below. And come hang out with us, and let's see God move in power. Thanks for being with us.